Amen. Let's get ready. Um, Luke chapter 2. I'm getting back to Luke chapter 2. I can't seem to leave the story. So please bear with me if I sound like I'm repeating myself a little bit. There's nothing wrong in preaching what we preached last Sunday, is there? You know, just the Bible says faith comes by hearing repeatedly. <laughs> but I'm going to try and make it not a repetition, but maybe slightly. Yes, so that's Luke chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to read verses 8 to 17. And I'm going to crave your indulgence that we all participate in that reading. If that is okay with you, it is projected. Can we have it projected a bit bolder? Is that possible? No? Okay. Then we have to buy something that works better. Please. Can't tell me no. I hate the word no, especially when I want something. Anybody else like me here? Yes, no. <laughs> no, what no? We'll make it happen. Uh, can you all read? If your eyes are not so good, then read your own. Shall we go? And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. Pastor, but the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. Wow. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. I want you to take note of the verse before and the verse that we read now. They heard the news. The announcement was made to them. They decided we need to see for ourselves. They went, they saw, they believed, and what did they do? What did they do, church? We are ready together. Okay, let's finish. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed what the shepherds said to them. Amen. Amen. So we read it together. It's very important. One of the main things that was done in the church, the early church, when they came together, read the scripture. There were services that were devoted to just scripture reading. These are arts that we have lost in the church today. I think way before, we used to have those services where we sat on the floor here, just reading scripture, one person at a time. And we'll read it round. We, maybe we wanted to read eight chapters of the Gospel of John. And we would read. Praise God. I believe we need to bring those days back. Amen? You might find that some people have never read eight chapters of the Bible in one sitting. That will be an experience, isn't it? Amen. That's what it was in the early church. And we need to bring back those apostolic 
um, um, styles of doing things. Amen? So what we see here, thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you. We know that you're here with us. And we have experienced, and we are experiencing your, your presence, your touch, your, in our worship, God. In, in, in the songs that we sing, sang earlier on and in our worship. And even now, as we give you our hearts to receive your word, may we experience you in a real way. Father, may we hear what you have to say to us. Lord, what you might be saying to me may be slightly different from what you're saying to my sister or my brother. But I want to pray that each of us will hear you speak to us directly. And as we hear you, Lord, may we not just drop those words here carelessly, but may we take the word in and may we go away and act upon what we have heard. That your name may be glorified. That we may be blessed, oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what we see here is the announcement of the birth of Jesus. The world may not have known that Jesus was being born, that the Savior of the world was born. But heavens, hallelujah, celebrated. The angels came down in their droves. Heaven hit us like thunderstorm, and yet the world was asleep. Hello? Please bear with me and just let your imagination Walk for a little bit. How can this mega event be taking place? And it was commoners, shepherds, hello, that received the entourage from heaven. Hello. Ponder a little bit about that. Think about it. So often, we're expecting God to move with great men of God. Great women of God. And I don't know what that is, by the way. I know a great God. Amen. 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 Unless you're telling me the greatness of the man of God that want to, comes from the greatness of God. But there ain't no great man. There ain't no great woman. We're all men and women of God. Amen. Including yourself. You're a man of God. See? Champion, you looked away. That's you I'm talking about. I said, you're a man of God. So you never thought about yourself. Are you a man? You sure? You hesitated a little bit. Please go. I beg you. Are you a man? Oh, thank God. <laughs> Are you a child of God? So you're a man of God. Did you see that? It's not difficult, is it? Man of God. Women of God. All of us here. Praise God. But there is a great God who is both your father and my father. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we raise up people, put them on a pedestal. And he gets into their head. Because that devil, that wicked devil, it makes people think, you know, how? how what, what makes me different from you? Nothing. Listen, if God chose you to be the head of this church, you'll probably do a whole lot better than I'm doing. You probably will. Come on. So, the difference is that I was given the role to do what I'm doing. Amen? When a policeman, you know a policeman, you know when they wear those, their things they wear and everything. You see them on the road, you behave yourself, right? If you're a driver. Like, no, 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 no. You know, when you're coming on the A2, you see all those my people going to church on the A2, they're coming from Kent. They, they are speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. <laughs> when police car appear, or we just, everybody, you see, we just, everybody behaves themselves. Nobody, they no born you to overtake that police car. Unless the police was going below they, and sometimes they do. Praise the Lord. 
What made that difference? That same policeman, when he's offbeat, maybe in the evening he went to his local pub, you won't even notice him, will you? What made him control all of us without saying a word? <laughs> Is what? The car, the uniform, the everything. That's all. So we bow to the authority that put him in poor position because they are able to give us ticket straight away. And then, do you know, I understand these days they even, there's a way in which they give you a ticket if maybe the speed was too much, they send you back to school some kind of... Okay. Anybody here been to that kind of school? <laughs> God bless you for being honest. All of you who have been and who have not put your hand up, this one says my colleague. Are you sure it wasn't you? You won't give me lift. You're probably crawling all over the place. No. Praise the Lord. So don't boast. It's the blessing of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, okay, okay. Don't turn this to story time. This is my time. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. No, but watch what is going on here because I just thought I am mesmerized. That the maker of the universe came to the earth. And the angels came all. The angels came to celebrate his birth. That's their master lying in the manger. Oh my God. Oh my God. You don't understand. I'm sure the angels are just as curious and wondering what the heck is going on here, boss. <laughs> Hello? The wisdom of God by which he makes diviners mad. My king, I worship you. Oh! Am I not glad that you opened my heart to receive you? Let it be, oh God, this day that you will hear our cry over our community that men and women will come to know you in this community of God. Oh, the great one. You left your glory. You came to this earth. When the angels, since he only found room in a manger, I think it's only right and proper that the people who will receive the glorious invitation and announcement. And very soon we're going to have our notices, isn't it? In church, we do what we call notices. How many of you listen when we are given the notices? Be honest. To truly, truly listen. Majority of you zone out. That is why sometimes when we have announced there will be no service on so so day, one day, <laughs> one day, Dickness, Ellen and I, we came to work, so we closed work and we were going and we saw one of the brothers, we shall mention name, we will leave your name, amen, <laughs> and we saw him coming, he was rushing, coming from work, he said, ah, what are you, what, what, what are you doing here, he said, oh, is there no Bible, was it Bible study or primary, can't remember which one it was, and I said, were you? In church on Sunday, say yes. Oh, okay. You are one of those. <laughs> Obviously, he zoned out during the notices. Amen? Amen? And he missed the fact that there will be no prayer or Bible study, whatever service it was. And we said, well, welcome. You can go and have it yourself. We have closed. <laughs> We've closed from work. We're going home. And so he went back home. You know, this was a notice that was being given, announcement, announcing the birth of Jesus, announcing the birth of the Messiah that all of Israel has been waiting for. Amen? Amen. The lauded Jews have been waiting for the Messiah to come. Remember the Messiah, the son of David, the offshoot of David would come and deliver them. They thought 
from oppression, yes, that's correct, but not the way they thought it. They thought he would come and he would be another Moses. Amen? He would probably take them through some Red Sea or Black Sea or whichever. But this time, they did not know the work of God. Hallelujah! And what happens? The announcement goes by the angels to the shepherds. They're surprised. They're shocked at what they had. They've never seen such sights in their life. I am in my own imagination just wondering what happened. I was just thinking, now, I, I don't know. This is my imagination. I'm thinking of the kind of fireworks. Do you like fireworks? How many of you like fireworks? Fireworks. The display of fireworks. Come on, talk. You don't like fireworks? What's your problem? Oh, I don't like the noise. If they can have fireworks, that don't make noise. But I love the display. You know, when, when you have those big fireworks, just the display of beauty and splendor, and that's absolutely nothing. That is trash, I believe, compared with what would have happened in Jerusalem that day in Bethlehem. I was beginning to imagine, my God, whoo, you know, probably hear God say, it's all right, may calm down. No, because I know everything God does is full of splendor. Amen? If you know God, you can, you can position yourself to begin to imagine what he is doing. And in this announcement, these humble people with their sheep, whoever cared about them, whoever came to to shepherds in the evening, at night, probably was winter. I don't know. But who? No one. And here, they become what? Objects of visitation of the, what? The company of heaven. Hello? These are not prophets. These are not. Because right there and then, there were people who had been waiting, praying, oh God. Oh God, let the Messiah come. He didn't show up in the intercessory prayer. Hello. He showed up to these humble people. And what? The way they received the announcement tells us how wise God is. Amen. God knows those who will receive him. He knows all people. He knows everything. And so, he chose to announce himself where he will be celebrated. The Bible says, they got round, got themselves, and they decided, let us go and do what? See. Praise God. Let us go and do what? See. If you read the story of the visit of the Magi to Herod. You know Herod didn't say, let me go and see. Hello? And when he told those Magi, the three, the wise men, we don't know that there are three. I don't know why somebody put three. The wise men that came from the Far East. He said, oh, you go and check. And there are people like that today who say, you go, go check that church. Go check. Well, you try this Christianity. But they are not willing. They are not interested. Praise God. And he says, if you find him, bring word so that I too can go and worship. But you and I know that he had ulterior motive. Amen? But here are these shepherds. When they heard the announcement... When they heard the song, they knew that this thing is legit. You know when something is legitimate by the way it comes. Amen? And they decided they would go. You know, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians, in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, maybe we can even read a couple of verses there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, if we can quickly go into that, and read verses 26 to 29. 1 Corinthians 
Chapter 1, verses 26 to 29. Are we there? Shall we? Can, can we read it together? Is that okay? All right, let's read it together. Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. Can you see that? I mean, of course, Paul, speaking on this occasion to the church of, of Corinth, tells us that God's choice of these people, these shepherds, God chooses who he wills. Amen? And when even God chooses us, let us not boast. That's what I was saying earlier on. What makes me different from, do you get it? Don't boast. He chooses the lowly things. Yeah, now I understand even better. So I'm lowly, that's why he chose me. I am nothing, that's why he chose me. Is that, is that not what the scripture says? So when you're chosen, know who you are. Amen? When that announcement was made, it was made personally to the shepherds. And they took the announcement personally. When the word comes out from this altar or wherever, do you take it personally? Or do you just think, oh well, is the sermon today? Um, what was the sermon? And, and actually you can run down the sermon from beginning to the end. But what did it do to you? Does it have any personal effect on you? We know that the notice to the shepherds had a personal impact on them. Amen? Amen? That notice, what did he say? Behold, let us go back to the text in Luke, please. Chapter 2. Okay. Okay. He says, do not be afraid, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all. So, let's stop there. He brought the news to the shepherds, but it's not just for the shepherds, is it? For who also? For all people. So we have received this good news. We have embraced the good news. But it shouldn't die with us. The good news is for all people. For those, it's universal, if I may use that word. And the fact that it's universal doesn't mean that it contradicts the fact that it is personal. It is first of all personal to us. And it is universal. Praise the Lord. And because it, the, word, the beauty of the word of God. Because it is universal. No, no tribe. No ethnic city. Ethnic. Ethnic. Should boast. Amen. And I, and, and I really see the ignorance of people. When they begin to argue that Jesus was a black man or a white. I don't care. Jesus was not a man, he's God. Amen. Hello? Yes. You know, and, and you know, when people are locked up in such arguments, you know where they are bound. They are chicken, chickenized people. But people who understand if, if uh, okay, let me not go there. Praise God. So, he cuts, he cuts across all ethnic, tribe, color, race, whatever you can think about. Nobody I know, yeah, the Israelites as a nation, you know, yeah, they can be proud of the fact that um, Jesus was born in their tribe, but he transcends. Amen? How many of you know one song they sing? Oh, why am I going there? I just came to my head, sorry. You know there's a song, I don't know who's, who, I think some Nigerian coined that song. When Jesus came down, Came first to Africa. Have you heard that song? Yes. Very diabolic. I'm telling you. 
No, he, he came first to Israel. No, 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 no. When, when Jesus came down, he came down in Israel. When there was trouble, he, he packed up his load and went to Africa. My, oh, my. <laughs> the first time I heard that song, I'm thinking, what a diabolical song. But it, it makes good dancing, you know, and it makes the Africans feel good, but, you know, and I happen to be an African too. So, but, you know, there is, it's theologically false. Amen? You'll be amazed what church, what people dance to in church. You have to be very, very careful. Amen? It's all right, we can dance to that in a party, but in church, I don't know. It's theologically completely faulty. Pastor, and let me ask our worship pastor before I tread on this patch. Hello, Pastor. Do you agree with me? Yes. Thank, thank you. Ah. <laughs> what did he <you> just say? <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it, 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 it makes for good dancing. Oh, we, we dance it in CFT, didn't we? They love it there. And we love it when they sing it. Praise God. Jesus packed his load and went to Africa. <laughs> Can you imagine? So... <laughs> Ah, what next? Praise God. The fact that it was announced to shepherds, people who call people in lowly jobs, you know, lowly people, tells us that God reaches out to the humble. Amen? As a matter of fact, elsewhere in the Bible says he does what? He resists the proud. Amen? And he gives grace to the humble. And so we as God's people must be humble people. We who are chosen today, we're not chosen because you know what? You are believers. We were chosen because he helped us to believe. Amen? And that's why we must be patient with others. Patient with those who do not yet know him. Because every time you see an unbeliever do anything, just remind yourself that that's who you were. But for the grace of God. Or that's who you could have been. Yeah, when I see people who do, oh, I, I could have been that. I could have been in the gutters, but for the grace of God. And that should work humility in us. But not just humility, that should cause us, like these shepherds, to be committed to proclaiming what was proclaimed to us. The good news was brought by the angels to the shepherds. They went. The experience, as many of us have come to the Lord Jesus, we have experienced him, and we can tell that he is. Amen. He is what? Not amen. He is. Come, test and see, for the Lord is good. Test and see, brother, taste and see. Come, test and see, for the Lord is good, test and see. If you and I have tasted the Lord, and we have found him to be good, tell me why we are not eager to tell somebody, to befriend somebody, to get to know somebody. So that by some means, you might be given the opportunity to share what you have seen and experienced of God. What has happened to these shepherds should remind us that we have come to see. We have come to experience him. And we have come to embrace him. And now we must go to our friends. We must go to our neighbors. And we must tell them what we have seen and experienced. It must make us evangelistic. That's what I'm trying to say. It must make us want to share the message with everyone we come across. It must give us missionary zeal whenever the call comes for mission. God wants us to share this message. You know, in Acts chapter 10, Peter was on the, the well, his housetop. He'd gone to pray. 
He'd been waiting on the Lord, probably fasting. And he'd gone to pray. And while he was there, God gives him a vision. And then, you know, he says uh, something was let down from heaven. And there was all manner of animals in that thing. And he had a voice say to him, Peter, kill, eat. He said, huh? Never ate any crawling stuff in my life. I'm a proper Jew. This is him defending his faith in his trance. And he says, come on, Peter, eat. He says, no, he took up. He brought it back again. Peter, eat. He said, no, 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 no. I've never done that. And what God was trying to say to Peter is that this message is for all nations. Amen. Not for a select few. It is not an elitist message. It is for all. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, he did miss the opportunity to be the apostle to the Gentiles. Amen? And God had to raise Paul. He did a great job, by the way. Right? And so, what about you? Should God have to leave you and raise somebody else? When he has called you to be his vessel to reach the people of Europe, should he have to raise somebody else? Because you know what? If we don't do it, God's work can never suffer loss. He'll get somebody else to do it. Help me to tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. If you don't do it, God will get somebody else to do the work. You don't pray that should happen, do you? So say neighbor. I pray sincerely from my heart that another will not replace you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I know that Christmas has a special meaning for all of us as Christians. But you know, Christianity is not a private religion. Amen? As sadly, I think the country that we're in also makes it look like that. Where we have prime ministers who are supposed to be Christians, but they don't talk about their faith because it's their private life. Amen? Amen? That was one of the questions that we put to Tony Blair. I remember, I don't know, those of you who were at Faith, faith Hope for the something, something that we did in Birmingham years ago, the ACR. That was one of the questions that we put through him. Remember when Tony Blair came to speak to the leaders? You know, if you are a Christian, why does the United Kingdom not know it? Why? Today, the LGBT, the LGBT? LGBT, whatever it is, they're fighting tooth and nail to be known and recognized. To, you know, in fact, to take over as though there were no people before they began to show up. And yet, 